Bro, this chapter was off the charts, so let me not waste no time. Let's just get right into this. So this one opens up with the last one left off. We got Rebecca and Drake and Joe in the same room. Rebecca's wearing clothes and Drake and Joe is not. And did you see the way that Drake and Joe hopped out that hot tub, bro? He was like... <laughs> you see what I'm working with? <laughs> Yo, I got a question, bro. How big you think Drake and Joe's... You know what? What am I talking about? Let's keep going. Although I can't keep going, bro, because look at Rebecca's face. I'm thinking she can't be making that face if he's got a... Why am I still talking about this? For real, we're moving on, okay? So after Drake and Joe washes himself off from being in the hot tub, he puts on a fresh bathrobe, bro, and I gotta respect it because I'm wearing a bathrobe right now. Anyways, conversation between Rebecca and Drake and Joe then ensue, and Drake and Joe is very polite throughout the entire way through. Like, he basically starts off the conversation by saying, relax. Don't worry about it. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm not gonna torture you I'm not gonna do anything of the sorts He just wants to talk and he also tells her that the reason that he knows about her to begin with is because of Master Noah however and props to Rebecca for this even after being told that her master of her guild sold her out She pushes past that and wants to get straight to the point of why Drake and Joe is after the Eden Zero in the first place Drake and Joe answers her question by simply saying that the reason reason that he's after the Eden Zero is because there's something very precious on it. However, before the conversation can continue, Drake and Joe gets up and says that he wants to show her something. But he sees that her clothes are a bit torn, so he left her some new ones and he'll leave the room so that she can get changed. The chapter then goes to the continuation of the fight between Cheeky, Jin, and Silk. Although it is really just Cheeky versus Jin because Silk leaves almost immediately to chase after Hamura at Jin's orders. Cheeky tries to stop her but is immediately thwarted because of Jin. And after stopping Cheeky for a moment, he says, You will be dealing with me. Jin has such cool lines, bro. Pino then asks Jin if he is part of the Element 4, but he replies by saying, No, he is simply a mercenary. But his task is to assist his sister clean. Then Shiki chimes in and says, hey, you've been calling her your sister this entire time. Does that mean that you two are family? And Jin's response to this is actually pretty interesting because he stays silent for a second. Then he replies with a wind attack and says, that is none of your concern. So obviously there's more to Jin and Sylph's story than them just being brother and sister. But who knows? Back to the chapter. So Shiki blocks this wind attack, skinning back a bit, but then leaps forward and tries to land a hit on Jin. However, he dies dodges this completely, then says, There has been no change in your ether powers since our bout at Elegia Tower. Of course, that's to be expected from a normal human. But I am not normal. Now I'm a little bit confused by this statement. I don't understand if he's saying like he hasn't learned a new move since Elegia Tower, which I think is actually true because that's when he learned how to do those gravity ball things and he hasn't learned a new attack since. Or maybe when he says ether powers, he's just talking about Shiki's power in general and saying that it hasn't grown since Jin and Shiki fought, which would be really interesting if that was the case. Like, even after everything that Shiki went through, battling Jamaroff, battling at the Colosseum, battling against Madame Kurenai's Dragoon, like, none of that made him more powerful. I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably the first option. Anyways, Jin then goes for an attack and it looks absolutely devastating. And it actually does what looks like to be some major damage on Shiki. Now he gets up about two seconds later, but even still, it did some damage. Then Jin says, Bro, I gotta voice act these lines, let me hit it real quick. By modifying my body, I have raised my power 320% since our last meeting. Now I will show you. This is the true power of an ether gear. Overdrive! Now, if what I think is going to happen in the next chapter after seeing what Jin just did... Bro, if it happens the way that I'm thinking, it's going to be reaction-worthy. I gotta do it. And I'll just let you in on what I'm thinking, bro. Jin is basically at 100% of his power right now. If Shigi goes to 100%, bro, that will be the best chapter of Eden Zero of all time. Back to Drake and Joe and Rebecca. So, Drake and Joe shows Rebecca what he wanted to show her, and it turns out that that thing is Lobelia. And let me tell you, she is not looking too good right now. Now, the reason why Drake and Joe did this to Lobelia is because Lobelia was so mean and 
cruel to Rebecca. So he did this as a gift from him to Rebecca, since she will be joining his crew. Because the thing that Drake and Joe wanted from the Eden Zero wasn't Ethereon like I thought, it was actually Rebecca herself. Rebecca Blue Garden. Or should I say number uh, 2029? I don't even have a theory or a clue or anything about what this could mean. I don't understand what number 29 means. I don't know why her last name is Blue Garden. I thought that was a planet. Why is she number 29? 29 of what? Is there a hundred? Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Yeah.